What is up, YouTube? I am Galdi74 here, bringing you week three of the APM lower tiers. This week, we take on Rubens136, coach of the Spanish Toros. We're going into this game with a 1-1 record, while my opponent is going into this game with an 0-2 record. Now, you guys are seeing this on Monday as opposed to Sunday, because we had the battle on Saturday, late-ish, and I couldn't be bothered to rush the video for Sunday, so I was going to take my time, and you guys are going to see us on Monday. And before I get into the actual portion of the video, I've been looking at my like to view ratio recently and I've been really happy with you guys. So thank you guys so much for hitting the like button on my videos. Uh, I appreciate you loyal viewers a lot. I know most of you. So, you know, thank you guys so much. But anyway, we're going to dive into our week three battle against Ruben. Uh, this week we have a pretty good matchup. We did win last week, by the way. So we are kind of on a win streak right now. And hopefully we can carry this momentum into this week. But our matchup's pretty good this week. We do have a few noticeable things as my opponent has a ditto. And god, I hate freaking prepping for ditto so much. It is so annoying to deal with. But that is something I have to deal with this week. As well as a few other small things. But besides that, I still think our matchup is pretty good. But you guys want to know that. I'm going to say the team now because that's why I do it almost every week for some reason. So I'm going to go over my opponent's team. Uh, Ruben's team it consists of Dublade, Tentacruel Z-Moves, Whimsicott, Scrafty, Shuckle, Ditto, Talonflame with Z-Moves, Zangoose, Bruxish, and Togedemaru. So now what I expect him to bring consists of Dublade, Scrafty, Ditto, Talonflame, Zangoose, and Togedemaru. He could bring the Tentacruel and drop something, but I really am pretty confident with these six mons because these six mons do the most work against my team. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, Ditto is the most annoying thing to prep for, thus my team's going to be a little weird looking this week because of Ditto. So note that if there's some weird things on my uh, sets, that's probably the reason why. So that is Ditto. A Zangoose is borderline impossible to switch into. Actually, it really is impossible to switch to. And Zangoose is probably the scariest thing on his side because he brings like the belly drum set because I saw that, you know, on freaking while I was calcing. And that is very scary. <laughs> I have a few ways to get around that, but it's still very scary. And Dewblade is also something else I have borderline no switches into. I do have a mon that can sort of switch into it and deal with it, but it's not the most reliable if he predicts correctly. And Dewblade is a pretty big problem in that sense. I can beat Dewblade offensively pretty well, as opposed to Zangu. Zangu is a little bit harder. But those are the two main biggest threats. And Talonflame's a little bit annoying because I had to deal with it defensively. Luckily, my defensive walls deal with it pretty well, but in order to deal with it, again, have to go the more defensive route, which kind of sucks. But luckily, his team has, like, no recovery. I think Talonflame is Roost, and I think Token Mario gets a Wish. And that is it. So, whittling down his team is going to be fairly easy, and that is sort of the route I am going to go this week, because, again, his team does not have reliable recovery, and if I can just chip his team down, I'll be able to win. And, of course, because I think my offense is absolutely fire on this team, and again, it has a really good matchup this week, as it's going to most weeks. So, those are the two main things, two keys I have this week going in, is that the you know, recovery and then my offense. But, that is basically the breakdown of his team. The team I am bringing this week to our battle consists of Galvantula, Empoleon, Togetic, Licky Licky, Blaziken, and Rose Raid. So the first one we are rocking out with this week is going to be the Galvantula. Galvantula is rocking out with a Magnet with max special attack, 192 speed and intimid nature, and the rest in HP. Moves being Sticky Beb, Volt Switch, Thunder, and Hidden Power Ground. I decided not to run Bug Buzz because it wasn't really necessary against this team. Nothing's really weak to Bug except for Bruxish. And yeah, Bruxish, and our Electric type's already super effective on that, so I didn't really need it in the end. Electric Spam is really free against his team because his only immunity is Toku Demaro, and if Toku Demaro comes in, I have Hidden Power Ground for that thing. It gives me a nice offensive way to beat that, so that is the reasoning behind that. This is here as a main offensive pivot of the team. Sticky Webs, while they aren't the most essential, they are pretty nice against this team. I don't need them to win, but they're just going to help me out in the long run because it stops Scrafty from really setting up, it stops uh, Zangoose from becoming a big, big problem, and his lower tiers. That was the main reasoning for behind that. Again, not too important, but if I get a chance to get him up, I will get him up. And that is going to be these Galvantula for the week, our first time we're bringing it. Next up, we have Empoleon. Empoleon's rocking out with Scald, Knockoff, Defog, and Roar. Max HP with the Leftovers and 184 at Defense with a Bold Nature. A little bit of attack and 56 speed. Don't remember what the speed is there for, to be completely honest. But Scald is pretty spammable against his team because if I can burn stuff like anything, really, because most of his main threats are actually physical. So, like, Zangu's getting burned would be amazing. Uh, Toga Demaru getting burned would be great. Scrafty being burned was, would be really great. Uh, Talonflame's not going to want to switch into this. Uh, but, yeah, this, that's mainly what Scald was just there for. Obviously, you know, Scald's kind of free. Uh, Knockoff is there to get rid of, like, Eviolite on Dewblade or any other essential items, like leftovers or something, to halt some recovery attempts from his side. 
and then roar for like setup like, again like belly drum or just any stories like like scrappy there we go for example i don't know so roar is just to get rid of just any boost i needed to if i have to and then defog is to get rid of rocks and webs because his only real uh hazard setter is shuckle and i guess toxic spikes from tentacruel and empoleon just walls the hell out of both of them so that's why i ran defog on empoleon this week and mainly that's kind of it is it more of a defensive pivot of the week but we're going to go on to our third mon, which is Tugetic. Tugetic is rocking out with the Eviolite. Max HP, 156 defense with a bold nature, and 96 in spit death. Moves being D-Gleam, Agent Power, Flamethrower, and Roost. Uh, rock and Fire coverage is sort of a trend <laughs> this week a bit. Uh, it's, it's going to be really nice against this team. Fairy, for this is my main switch into Scrafty, and it's kind of almost here just for Scrafty. It's also here for a few Ditto reasons, but mainly for Scrafty, because I can switch into it, take any hit. Uh, does not, Scrafty doesn't want to take a D-Gleam, so it's going to switch out, and I can get Chip on something. It also switches into Whimsicott pretty reliably, because Whimsicott's most likely going to be bulky if it even comes. Uh, this is hardwalled by Tentacruel, but it's okay, because I have a lot of ways to deal with Tentacruel. And this is also can tank a few hits from Talonflame, barring if it's not boosted. And I mean, if it's boosted, then that kind of sucks. But Talonflame basically cannot come in on Togetic and set up free because I have Ancient Power, and that's going to do a lot of damage to Talonflame. But Togetic mainly here just for Scrafty. We're going to move on to our fourth mon of the week, which is going to be Licky Licky. This is the first time we're bringing this mon, and I'm actually really excited to use this thing. It is rocking out with a Rocky Helmet and max HP, max defense, basically. Uh, moves being Wish Protect, Flamethrower, Rock Slide. A fire coverage for like Dewblade and Toga Demaru because Licky Licky is my main switch into both of those mons. And the rock side was for Talonflame, so again, not set of fodder by that thing because Talonflame is a little bit scary because it does have Z move coverage. By the way, his Z mons are Tentacruel and Talonflame. I, don't, I forget if I mentioned that or not. But this that was the coverage I really needed. I can also switch into Whimsicott pretty safely because Whimsicott really does not hit that hard. And I can flamethrower it, do a lot of damage to it. Uh, wishes just to make sure Empoleon can stay healthy as well as any other mons on my team if I can pass a wish to them as well as Licky Licky itself because it is not rocking leftovers it's rocking Rocky Helmet for like you know Toga Tomaru, Doomblade and all that extra stuff. Licky Licky again mainly here just to switch into his physical attackers and it's just really good coverage overall even it can take a hit from Zangoose too so that's one big merit about it as well. Uh, for our fifth mon, though, we are going to move on to our more offensive route. We have Blaziken. Blaziken is rocking out with max attack with a naughty nature, 188 speed, and 64 in HP with the focus sash. Moves being flamethrower, superpower, earthquake, and vacuum wave. Big shouts to Young Bisharp from the PEBA. He tried bringing a vacuum wave against me in my one matchup. Fortunately, unfortunately for him, you couldn't run vacuum wave with speed boost, but Blaziken, my Blaziken's a Blaze Blaziken, so I can run vacuum wave on it. This is my main way to deal with a Zangoose that is insanely boosted because Vacuum Wave does like 60%, 50 to 60% to it. So just chipping that thing down a bit and then just Vacuum Wave it kind of gets it out of the picture. And as well as his priority, so that's really nice. I ran Flamethrower over Flare Blitz because my main switch into my own Blaziken is to get it, and Flare Blitz still does a load to that thing. So I decided to run Flamethrower in the end, and Flamethrower still does a really great chunk to like Whimsicott and Dewblade and Toga Demaru as well. I do have to be a little bit careful about Toga Demaru because it is faster, and I would have to tank a hit, and Blaziken is not that bulky, so I do have to be careful about that. But my, his team has an incredibly hard time switching into Blaziken. The only thing that really switches into it is Town Flame itself, so that's something I have to be noteworthy of. And then our final mod of the week is going to be Rose Raid. Rose Raid is sort of the glue piece of this week. We are rocking out with Max Special Attack, Modest Nature, 84 Speed, and 168 in HP with the Black Sludge. Moves being a Sludge Bomb, Hand Power Ground, D Gleam, and Synthesis. He's got a pretty big speed gap in between tent, uh, Zangoose and Scrafty, so I decided just to take advantage of that. I uh, don't need grass coverage this week because it wasn't really that important because I'm not going to be standing in on Bruxish if it even comes anyway. Sludge Bomb is really spammable against everything except for like Dublin and Toga tomorrow. HP ground, the rid rate does a lot. I have to be careful against because of Toga tomorrow because it's faster, but I can tank a hit and just knock it out with HP ground. A D Gleam was for Scrafty, so I don't become set up bait on that thing. And Rose is mainly a glue piece because it switches into a lot of my own team. Rose Raid switches into like half of my team, if not more. So that was mainly the reasoning for this Rose Raid set. And then Synthesis just to get reliable recovery. But that is going to be the six mods we are bringing this week. I'm pretty excited because it's the first time Licky Licky and Galvantula are coming, while Togetic is rocking three attacks this week, which is kind of nuts. But that is it for me. I'm going to go over to Pokemon Showdown, and we're going to watch the battle. All right, we have arrived at Pokemon Showdown, and he has brought a completely different team than what I expected. He brought the Tentacruel and the Whimsicott and the Shuckle and did not bring the Dewblade or Scrafty. But I did realize after the battle that he actually brought this team week one and two, so it's not as shocking 
And speaking of shocking, I am going to lead off with my Galvantula because it is a pretty free Volt Switch, and if Togo Dumara wants to come in, I can just hit click HP Ground. So I'm going to Volt Switch out on the Shuckle, as that's not really too shocking, as I can just go out into Empoleon, because Shuckle cannot really touch Empoleon, as he just puts up the webs. The webs are a little bit of a nuisance, so I do want to get rid of these, as I am going to click Defog this turn. Uh, in hindsight, I should have waited to see if he'd put up rocks, as he shows to put up rocks right now. So that sort of sucks, but now I'm going to click knockoff just to get rid of these leftovers from Shuckle as he switches out into Togu Demaro. So Togu Demaro is going to take a solid 34% from that knockoff, which is pretty nice, and get rid of Focus Sash. I'm going to go out into Licky Licky now because it is my main switch into this Togu Demaro as it just clicks Zing Zap and it doesn't really do too much, so that's pretty nice. And it takes some Rocky Helmet Recoil. And now he's just going to Volt out of there, get to crit, doesn't really matter. As I'm just going to click Wish, and here comes probably the biggest threat on his side, which is the Zangoose, if not the Town Flame. Uh, luckily he shows he does have the Toxic Orb, so he's not the Belly Drum set, which was a little more threatening in the right situation, as like in this situation. So he just clicks Knock Off as I click Protect to receive my own Wish. I know Knock Off's not actually going to do much, so I'm just going to click Wish again, and try and start whittling this thing down. He does take the Rocky Helmet chip as he knocks off the Rocky Helmet, but that's fine, because Toxic Damage is going to start racking up on himself. And so I can just click Protect again and get up to as high health as possible, and just keep doing this game. He's not going to be able to break my Licky Licky, considering this Zangoose does not have close combat. And that's what he's trying to do right now. So I'm content with just clicking Wish and Protect over and over again, as he's going to click Facade. It does a solid 60%, so it's still hitting pretty hard. But my Licky Licky is going to become out on top victorious, unless he wants to switch out this turn. Which, as I click Protect, you see he does not switch out. So I'm going to be able to be up to 90% on my Licky Licky, and Zangoose is going to drop. So this was a great exchange for me, the biggest threat on his team to my team is gone. And now he goes down to Whimsicott, expecting me not to be able to touch him. He just goes for Cotton Guard, as I actually do have the Flamethrower on the set, and it is going to do a lot of damage to this Whimsicott, a solid 44%. Whimsicott is proving to be now bulky because it's got Cotton Guard, at least I would think, as now he's going to go down to Town Flame, and because of my prep after this Flamethrower, my last move on the set is Rock Slide, so this Town Flame is not going to enjoy this Rock Slide. I have to hit it, as I do hit it, and he's down to 6%, and now it's not really a threat too much. Now here I make a pretty big boy play, I know this town flame is Z user, so I'm going to protect to see if this thing is going to pop the Z, as it does, and he does have the Inferno Overdrive, it's still going to do some damage because of, you know, Z moves, but it's fine, now this thing, if it's going to knock me out, which it actually doesn't even knock me out, uh, it would have killed itself to recoil anyway, so, that was a win for me. Uh, at this point, uh, it's, I'm going to just sack Licky Licky because it's done its job, as my poor opponent, uh, Rubens, actually does misclick here and clicks his Encore on accident, so Licky Licky is going to rack up even more kills now, as it is 6-3, to three, and Licky Licky essentially beat the three mons that were on the field, so Licky Licky has done its job immensely. Uh, I'm just going to go into Empoleon now with this Tentacruel coming out, because it is just free for me, as now I can click Knock Off on something. Or actually, I think I defog first. I actually defog these rocks away because I don't want like Galvantula to get to get it to take the extra chip. As now I'm gonna go out into Togetic to tank any hit from this Whimsicott. At this point in the battle, I do speed up the battle from slow to normal on the showdown thing because you see Rose Raid against this op my opponent's team, and at this point, Rose Raid just wins the game. And I don't know why, knowing how passive my opponent's team is, I didn't go in the Rose Raid at least earlier than I actually did in this battle. So at this point, it's just me trying to pivot around his team and just get in the best momentum the situation when realistically I should have just went into Rose Raid in the first place and sort of knocked, finished this battle off a little bit earlier. As here I'm going to click Knock Off and try to like whittle down a scene with like Knock Offing Leftovers and pulling on maybe Scald Burning things, but realistically, again, Rose Raid was basically a play every time and I'm not sure why I did this, so this battle is going to drag on a bit longer than it should have, but we're going to get it here. It's just going to be chipping down at his team a bit as he's going to have a free switch into Tenor Cruel every time on my Togetic. That is kind of like what sort of during the battle, that sort of told me, like, okay, I need to change something up. As I go into Rose Raid now, as he clicks Scald on my uh, Rose Raid, and I think this, if I, cal I didn't really calc it too much, but I'm pretty sure this Tentacruel is actually a little bit more offensive. So, I guess and it, when, it wasn't the worst play in the world not to go into Rose Raid earlier, because an offensive Tentacruel could potentially beat this Rose Raid in the right situation. As I has a knockoff toxic and du dual hazards so it can't even touch my rose raid that much i can just whittle it down to get it and rose raid a bit here i go into rose raid finally on the whimsicott <laughs> so i can just click sludge bomb and if he wants to go you know into anything else i can click another move as he goes out into the shuckle luckily on this sludge bomb here i do snag a poison so this is going to speed up the process a bit more finally so I this is when i realize at this point i can just stay in and click buttons against this his team so i'm going to click sludge bomb until this shuckle does something 
I don't mind Hazards being up at this point because knowing Whimsicott's really bulky and Tentacruel is a can't touch Empoleon, I basically had this game pretty much set. So I don't mind having Hazards on my side of the field. I'm just going to click uh, buttons now again as he just keeps setting up Hazards, but it's, again, it's not really going to matter. Uh, I'm going to click Synthesis once just to get a net gain of health as the Shuckle is losing health slowly because of the regular poison damage. As he just clicks Knockoff, it does 8%, and that's with my item, so Knockoff's just doing nothing. As now, this turn, I am going to be able to knock out the Shuckle with any move I click. I decide to click a Sludge Bomb and down goes the Shuckle, and that's pretty cool. And he's probably going to bring in Tentacruel now, and as I mentioned, that Tentacruel is pretty more offensive. As you're going to see here in a second, I do click Hand Power Ground, and he clicks Acid Spray, which is really good tech on my opponent's part. As I click Hand Power Ground, it's supposed to do like around half, but it does 67%, so that's why. And Acid Spray and a Sludge Wave actually might knock out my Rose Raid, so I do want to actually save it and go back out and pull on just to take the damage or whatever. As he is going to click the Sludge Wave here, so it's just nothing really. Uh, I'm going to click Knock Off one more time, because if he goes in the Whimsicott, it's just a free switch in into Rose Raid, which he does. And I'm going to... Oh, I click Defog, my bad, not Knock Off. So the Hazards are gone for good. And now at this point, I can just come in the Rose Raid, because this Whimsicott does not have Psychic. And just Giga Drain's not going to do anything. And I'm going to click Synthesis, but since the Tentacruel took the HP ground from earlier, it's not going to be able to uh, use Acid Spray into Sludge Bomb because of the damage it took. So I'm going to get up to a reasonable amount of health and then click Hit Hint Power Ground and Sludge Bomb on the Whimsicott. So that's basically how this game's going to go. I'm kind of dragging on this battle at this point, but you guys kind of know the result at this point. So I click Hit Power Ground and Tentacruel is going to drop. I'm going to let you guys know right now, uh, we win this game 6-0, so this Wimscott's going to come in, it's going to click a button, and I'm going to click Sludge Bomb and absolutely nuke it. So that is going to be basically the game, as it does 17%, that's a reasonable chunk by the way, even though I am minus 2. So Wimscott goes down, that is going to be the game. GG to Rubens, we are going to snag a solid 6-0 win. Once we got rid of Rubens' offensive threats early in the game, like Zangoose and Townflame, I really feel like I had the game won because his team was a little more on the passive side. And my team was sort of meant to beat the passiveness of his team, as, you know, it did. It just took a little bit longer than it should have. But once, one more time, GG to Rubens. We are going to move up to a 2-on-1 record with a plus 9 differential. I'm a person who really doesn't care about differential too much. I always go for the win as opposed to save differential for the most part. Because, you know, that costs some coaches a lot more than you would think. And plus 9 differential is actually really insane for being 2-on-1 right now. So I'm really happy with that. Next week, we take on Lord of the Acorn, a coach uh, of the boys Blazekins. We fought him in the regular season at the APM, and we did win, and I believe that was the Stally battle we had. So <laughs> let's hope it's not going to be the same way in this league. So make sure to go like out for that next week, as well as ABC, the last week going up tomorrow, as it should. So make sure to look out for that. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you like Pokemon Draft League content, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to head out of here. Have a fantastic day, YouTube.